I want to talk to your father about a mugging incident involving him. Is he at home now? Yes, he's here. Do you want to see him? The police officer seemed puzzled by my tone for a moment, but eventually said, please, let me see him. So I led the police officer into the house and opened the door. My father is here, I said. The police officer was stunned to see my father there. This incident happened a few months ago. My name is James, and I'm a fourth-year university student. I've recently decided to work for a major company. But there's still something I'm undecided about, whether or not to take over my father's company. You see, my father is the president of a small factory. When I was younger, I used to aspire to take over the factory and become a president like him. However, those feelings faded during my rebellious phase. I started feeling embarrassed by my father, who was always covered in oil stains from his work clothes. This feeling persisted even as I entered my teenage years and somewhere in my heart, even now as an adult. Despite that, Working part-time jobs has given me a newfound respect for my father, who works hard while supporting many employees and their families. But still, I couldn't shake the feeling that a salaryman in a suit, working hard, is cooler than my father. One day, while shopping with my father, we were suddenly called out from behind. James, my father, and I turned around together. There stood a man around my father's age named Jack. Long time no see, he said. It turned out Jack was a high school classmate of my father's and happened to be on an outside sales trip, wearing a suit representing a famous large company. After revealing his impressive job, Jack asked my father, did you take over the family business after all? My father replied, oh yeah, we're still managing somehow. Jack scoffed, that dirty little factory of yours. You've become quite something as its president and you're only a high school graduate. That's impossible. You really are pathetic. I was shocked by Jack's words. Although I knew my father had taken over the factory after graduating from high school, I never expected a classmate to mock him like that. Nonetheless, Jack continued to smile silently at my father. No, unfortunately, I didn't manage to make my father's factory bigger. Despite my high school dreams of taking over the company and expanding it, I lacked the necessary business sense, and that dream didn't come true. Lass, I guess I couldn't help it. I'm good with my hands, but my head isn't very business savvy. However, it's a relief that we didn't go bankrupt. Jack seemed to find the situation amusing, laughing heartily and playfully slapping my father on the shoulder. You're good with your hands, but your head isn't very good. But it's good that you didn't go bankrupt. I thought guys like you were going bankrupt he chuckled. After exchanging some more banter, Jack mentioned he had more work to do and suggested catching up at the next reunion. With that, he left, leaving my father looking a bit awkward. He turned to me and suggested, shall we go? We resumed our shopping, but at that moment, I couldn't help feeling that my father's work was being mocked, and I didn't offer any rebuttal. The balance between taking over my father's company and continuing to work for a famous large company tilted heavily towards the latter. A few weeks later, by chance, my father's alumni association was held at the bar where I worked part-time. The place was bustling with customers, and I didn't have many opportunities to attend to the table where my father's alumni association was taking place. Although I initially thought it was lucky, when I eventually had the chance to go to that table, I felt a bit embarrassed about serving drinks to my father's alumni association. Despite feeling uncomfortable, I kept quiet because it was my job. Our bar had private rooms, and when I arrived at the table where my father's alumni association was being held in one of the rented-out large rooms, my father, who happened to be near the entrance, greeted me with a smile. Oh, James, are you the son? My father asked the woman next to him, who then introduced me as his son. I politely greeted them and arranged the drinks on the table. With eyes resembling my father's and a serious demeanor similar to his, I served the drinks while his drunken classmates teased me, and I awkwardly laughed along. Jack, who was sitting at a table nearby, noticed us and chimed in. We met recently too, James, right? Are you planning to take over your father's small factory? I answered honestly, 
No, I'm still thinking about it. With an alcoholic breath that disgusted me, Jack loudly proclaimed, Stop it. Your father's company is nothing special. James should work for a company like me instead of taking over such a company. He then proceeded to brag about his career history, but something seemed off. He had claimed to be in sales when we last met, but now he said he was the head of accounting. Sensing this discrepancy, I kept quiet, knowing it could be troublesome to point it out. However, my father, in his drunken state, spoke up, asking, Has your department changed since we last met? It hasn't been that long. A few weeks ago, was it an urgent transfer? Did sales not suit you? Jack looked flustered and nodded, admitting, Yes, that's right. Sales wasn't for me. As soon as I transferred, I became the head of accounting. My father pointed out that the company Jack boasted about had been absorbed by a foreign company, and its accounting department was based overseas. This revelation drew laughter from the crowd. Embarrassed and regretful, Jack mumbled, I'll go home, and left with heavy footsteps. People around us reassured my father that he hadn't done anything wrong, suggesting that Jack must have always been like that. Seeing my father praised for his honesty rather than being laughed at made me happy, even though he was drunk. My father appeared composed when he spoke up about what everyone else found difficult to address. Half a year has passed since then, and I still spend days contemplating whether or not to take over my father's company. My confusion only deepens day by day, and honestly, I don't know what to do. One day, while relaxing at home, the intercom rang. Since my mother wasn't there, I went to the entrance. Yes, hello, I said. You're James? The visitor in uniformed clothes asked. Surprised and wondering if I had done something wrong, I replied with a stiff voice, yes. The police officer then mentioned something about a purse snatching incident and said there was something they wanted to ask my father. Purse snatching? My father? I exclaimed, yes, your father is suspected of purse snatching. Is he at home now? The officer inquired. Yes, he's here. But do you want to see him? I asked. The police officer seemed puzzled for a moment at my tone, but eventually said, please, let me see him. I let the police officer into my house and opened the door to the room. My father is here, I said. The room had a Buddhist altar and a photograph of my father. I then informed the police officer that my father had passed away in a traffic accident which left him frozen in shock. I'm sorry for your loss, the police officer said. Curious, I asked who had accused my father of purse snatching, but the officer replied that it was personal information and couldn't be disclosed. After apologizing to me several times, the police officer left. A few days later, while working at my father's factory to fill the void left by his absence, Jack barged in. Take me to your father. Return what he stole. He demanded loudly, his voice overpowering the noise from the large machines in the factory. I was surprised, and so were the other employees who stopped working and looked surprised. I addressed Jack, saying, Um, my father isn't here. Jack insisted. Then call him out right away. I'm having trouble because your father snatched something from me. I heard a voice from one of the employees murmuring, Purse snatching? Is it our president? But Jack remained adamant, crossing his arms and refusing to budge. He kept shouting, Give me your father. In response, I questioned him, My father is not the kind of person who would snatch purses. Are you sure you're not mistaken? Jack insisted, No, it was definitely your father. He must have been jealous of me working for a big company and snatched my bag. Fortunately, I didn't have my wallet or anything with me at that time but it's unforgivable that he snatched something in the first place. The police are useless, so I came here myself to talk to him. I inquired about the timing of the incident, and Jack decisively replied. About two weeks ago, the employees began to stir, seemingly confused by the commotion. When I pressed Jack again about the timeline, he grew angry at my persistence, shouting, What's going on? You keep asking me over and over again. I said it was two weeks ago. An elite like me came all the way to this small and smelly factory just for this. Hurry up and let me talk to your father. Feeling a surge of heat in my chest, 
I was troubled not only by Jack's derogatory remarks about my father's workplace and colleagues, but also by his attempt to blame my father for purse snatching. My father had passed away in a traffic accident just one month ago and couldn't possibly be involved. I clarified this to Jack, who looked stunned and muttered, Ha! Huh. I continued, How could my father snatch purses when he passed away one month ago? Maybe there wasn't even any purse snatching at all. I knew Jack was lying because I had learned at our recent class reunion that he had always been a habitual liar since his school days. Furthermore, it turned out that Jack had been jealous of my father since their school days because the girl he liked had liked my father instead. He had always harbored unnecessary rivalry against my father due to such petty jealousy. I couldn't forgive Jack for trying to pin an unfounded accusation on my deceased father just because of such petty jealousy. As Jack continued to insist on his claim, someone else started shouting from another direction, your president wouldn't do something like that. Our president is someone who dresses seriously and walks around like an honest person. Sure, the reason why we are always shorthanded is that the president teaches technology and encourages independence. He was a good person who always thought about the staff and business partners without thinking about profits. Voices praising my father rose one after another, and I was honestly moved. I felt ashamed of myself for ever thinking that my father's work was embarrassing. My father was a president who was respected by his staff and loved enough to be protected, even in such a situation. Jack's eyes filled with tears as he heard the voices of the factory workers defending my father. I delivered the final blow. The fact that you tried to frame my father for a lie. I will definitely consult with the police. With that, Jack raised his voice and fled from the factory. Later, as promised, I went to the police to report that my father had been falsely accused by Jack. The evidence was a recording of Jack's statement made by one of the staff members who had been thoughtful enough to record the argument. Thanks to this evidence, the police acted quickly and Jack was caught in no time. Jack's lie about accusing someone of a crime became his own crime, and he ended up in jail for a while. I felt relieved that he got what he deserved. A few days later, someone claiming to be Jack's wife came to our house with a gift box to apologize to me and my mother. When I asked if it was because of what happened at the reunion that Jack had framed my father, Jack's wife sighed and confirmed that it was. She revealed that Jack was actually an elite who had been fired from his company and had been struggling to find a job. His obsession with being an elite led him to lie about his status. But when he got drunk, he ended up embarrassing himself with inconsistent lies. He began to resent my father and decided to frame him. Disgusted by his ridiculous reason for lying, I learned that Jack's wife intended to divorce him. Jack apparently had no children, so even if he got out of jail, no one would be waiting for him. After graduating from college, I decided to take over my father's company. One reason was because I was worried about the management of the company since my father had just passed away. Another reason was because I couldn't forget the voices of the staff members who had protected my father when Jack lied about him. I wanted to become a president who is loved and respected by staff members like them. That incident became a turning point for me. Belonging to the Faculty of Business Administration, I could manage the part of management that my father wasn't good at, but I had to learn from staff members about technology. They taught me many things, saying, if it's for your son. And they also told me many stories about my father. Every time they did so, I realized how great my father was. After work, covered in oil stains, I spoke to his portrait, it's embarrassing now that I used to think this is uncool. This dirt is proof of how hard my father worked. I'll do my best to become a president like you, and I'll definitely make your dream come true. I spoke to his portrait again and felt like my father smiled. I'm going to work hard from now on to become a president like him. I want to fulfill my father's dream of expanding the town factory that has been passed down since my grandfather's generation.